Well, maybe they do, but I've never heard can it. Of, can of beans, tin of beans. I don't know. I say tin. You're right. Yeah. I, I was. I thought in my head. I thought I said can, but didn't sound right coming out. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. I don't know. I think I vote. I think I use can of beer though. But I'll probably say tin if I'm like, I don't know, trying to act. I don't know, not act. I'm trying to, I don't know, be like, oh, got some tinnies, have you? Or I don't yeah, know. Yeah. <laughs> Accentuate oh, got some the manliness. Tonight, mate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, night on the tins, uh, yeah. It's, it's put on, you know, yeah, I, have to make, I have to make an effort to make sure I say that. But um, interesting. What are you drinking tonight? Uh, I've got a tin of, <laughs> uh, in fact, we both went Sainsbury's, right? So I went yep. in there and I've got a bit of a soft spot for those, um, you know, those tiny little uh glass bottles of like french low alcohol lager yeah those little stubbies i really love them right but um and because because they're cheap and you can drink loads because they're relatively low alcohol they're like two percent or something um and i was like oh i want to find uh find the ones in sainsbury's but they don't have those little stubbies they just have cans of this thing called depo number 90 right which is i think their version two percent lager light and refreshing and it's it's in a like 440 can um, right. or, or tin I, yeah. I, I can't stop thinking about it now <laughs> who are you yeah 440 tin <laughs> and, uh, and it's great yeah it just it just goes down like a dream I know it's I don't know maybe it's a bit pikey to be drinking this like on the podcast but I was like I just had a few in the fridge and it yeah it tastes great like super mm. light super refreshing super easy and especially great. if you're driving you know you can have you know you can have two maybe three even yes. if you're you know if you're eating especially and you can, yeah, you sure. can still drive because it's such low alcohol, you know. Yeah, I mean, well, even the non-alcoholic ones are sometimes like one point five, zero point five, or one percent up near nearish one percent, zero point eight or something. Yeah, it's yeah. Not far off two, is it? You know, so it's getting getting near that. And then yeah, two is almost cool. the same as four, right? Yeah, so you might if as well you think about it. Yeah. I mean, come on. <laughs> I mean, as long as it's still single figures, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Good old slippery slope. Um, yeah. <laughs> what was I going to say? Oh, so those bottles that you, I know I see them in your fridge every now and again when we're around, um, and they instantly remind me of my dad. He would always have a like because they come in like these little cardboard yeah. packs of like twelve, right? Yeah, or a decent eight, twelve, a good amount. And he'd just leave it outside, like one or two of these. Sweet. And he wasn't a big drinker, but every now and again, if he's watching cricket or some rugby or something. He, and it was summer especially he'd go out and this like as as he'd le- leave it outside to keep cool like the cardboard would just be like eroding around these like <laughs> yeah. cans uh sorry t- uh, bottles um i think i reckon he he got it from his days traveling around europe like france and stuff he went to france a lot when, as a kid and i think it's quite a big it's a bigger thing in france right i, right. I, I imagine apparently those well i mean they're from a lot of them are from france right and yeah. like, germany and stuff Seems to be a, a theme that the, they've all got some sort of French branding or it just says French yeah. lager on it or something, doesn't it? So I think there's some overlap there. But yeah, so there's, I've got, and that probably, I think my first beer was actually, a first sip of beer was probably from one of them. So God, yeah, mine probably was to too, heart. actually. Yeah. Mm. That's a uh, <laughs> similar sort of thing. Yeah, dad watching BBC rugby or autumnal <laughs> afternoon on a Sunday. Well, I say watching, he was sleeping. <laughs> he yeah, was on, yeah. the, on the sofa, like, <laughs> mouth open, snoring, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. one of these little stubbies in his hand, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, he, he wakes, wakes up when there's, like, a try score. He's like, oh, yes, well done. And he's like, yeah. straight back to Doesn't yeah. realise it's actually Jonah Lomu who scored the try. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jonah. Oh, man. I miss him. Oh, I miss I his little haircut. I miss him. Oh, he was so good. A little fringe. Yeah. Oh, what a legend! Again, that uh, such a, again it instantly reminds me of my dad, that Jonah Lomu, watching yeah. the All Blacks doing their hacker before a game. Oh man. Yeah, dude. Good old good memories, mate. Good memories that. Yeah, Lawrence Delalio just gr- grimacing, watching it, <laughs> <Yeah>. like <laughs> having to stand there while he's <laughs> had the hacker done at him. Ah, oh, I absolutely love that. Are there any other sporting, like, um, what well, similarities? Where they where they make like an exception for a certain team. Oh you know, yeah. See what I'm, see what well, I'm saying? Like, yeah, one team like, does you know, something something a bit weird when they and just they before the game. It. Yeah, and they just, they just let it happen. Well, I know maybe that... cricket. I would imagine cricket has probably got something. Maybe I don't know. Hmm. Well, no, nothing off the top of my head. Maybe I'll I'll remember something later. But I know that mm. uh, other sort of islander teams like Fiji, I think, and Tonga, they do. They do a, yeah. their equivalent of a hacker. Yeah, uh, I've seen the. I think is it is it Fiji? They're like really good 
um, seven aside rugby. Yeah, that's it. And they they do it for that, don't they? Yeah. I think. They, am I right in thinking they're like they were number one in the world for a while, right? Uh, uh, seven aside. Smaller. Yeah, seven aside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I de- definitely not at uh, union. No, 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 no. Yeah, no, no. Just um, don't understand how that happens. But I guess they just they just focus on that. I guess. But um, yeah, yeah. But it's just a. I love that. It's such a cool, unique thing to have you know yeah just something that's um, tradition and it's stuck mm. it's stuck there yeah i like that mm. there they used to be a cricket ground i think it was kent um i think it was the kent county cricket ground uh i think that's in canterbury and i, I think until like relatively recently maybe like 10 15 years ago there was actually a tree on the on the field like they wow. built the cricket ground around, sort of around the tree there's a tree at the end and they just left it there so there's like a professional cricket match going on and they just have to avoid the tree um yeah but yeah i think they only removed it like i say 10 15 years ago so oh, you know, relatively recently put, put the crap fielder by that you can just sit chill under the shade yeah, yeah. And just have a cigarette whilst phil, he leans against the phil tufnell just having a snooze yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, well dear. i mean um in fact at lords there's a slope on the you know one of the yes one of the I think it's the pavilion end, maybe. It, as you're mm-hmm. watching, if you're watching the TV, uh, if you're looking at the batsman, it slopes away to the batsman's right, like down and away, basically. Wow. So they know that that little part of the field is really quick, obviously, because the ball's like being helped on by the by gravity, essentially, in the slope. I bet they do their best to keep it as 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 consistent as possible, but keep the slope, if that makes sense. Like, yeah, keep it, yeah, yeah. What I they, love that. I love the having these like these different grounds and different um, for all sports like where they've got their own little quirks. Like, yeah, for sure. In NFL, obviously, they're similar. Like all the northern teams, you know, like it's 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 good for the, it's um, an interesting one because all the southern teams, like Florida, from these like tropical places or California, and, like really sunny places, have to like go to Green Bay and like play <laughs> in the snow in January. You know, yeah. and it's just like. <laughs> like hailing and snowing and they just have to deal with it you know yeah. and it's um or I don't, I, or maybe there's like a, a certain team's got an insane crowd you know yeah um like that are just so loud exactly um obviously most of my references are nfl but i'm sure there are a lot of others but um i just love that there's that variability between like home grounds yeah and sure. I, I wish there were a little maybe it was a little bit more yeah because you know it would be a little bit more having the home and away even though it is a big difference maybe not nowadays because there's no crowds but even though there is a difference like having a home and away advantage a little bit more exaggerated i think would be nice i don't know what do you reckon couldn't agree more i, I love it yeah, yeah. I, I love the home fans baying for blood basically yeah it's incredible <laughs> it's like um i mean like uh like your references are nfl i've got a few more cricket ones i guess and um mm. Like obviously the ashes, like there are certain grounds where it's like uh, our one in England is Fortress Edgebaston, which is basically like Edgebaston is the loudest, most aggressive, most hostile ground that we've got in Britain, apparently. Mm. Um, and then in Australia, they've got the Gabba in Brisbane and that's like the same sort of thing. It's just enormous. And apparently there's no yeah. wind in there either because it's so tall and there's no gaps. So like, it's just like a pressure cooker basically but actually at the Gabba I don't know how recently they did this but there's a swimming pool in the stadium just on the side so like (laughs) if you want you could just go down there and just get in the pool so there's like loads of lads and there's girls in there and there's like inflatables and stuff like literally (laughs) in one section of the stands it it looks absolutely amazing you could just sit in there with a beer like watching the cricket and then you just you know when you're done you just get out and you know dry yourself off and go back in the stands basically amazing <laughs> oh so man good. that's so good that's awesome i uh, love that um what was i gonna say yeah the, another thing i heard as well man you are playing uh istanbul in the champions league and apparently they are vicious the crowd they obviously they, there's hardly anyone there at the moment really so we've, we've lucked out there but but they've got a reputation of having a <laughs> a vicious crowd wow apparently. yeah <laughs> yeah i didn't i didn't know that but um Interesting. Like some of the most, inti- some of one of the most intimidating crowds is what they say. Like you go out and yeah. they are just screaming, yeah, and especially because yeah. it's international, so you've got even less like Man U fans there, you know, yeah. if any, you know, hardly any. I, I love that. What yeah, I, so, I love it when the cr- so when the I. crowd give it, you know, give it the players. <laughs> it's amazing. That's part of the part of the challenge. 
yeah it's, it's excellent it just intensifies everything <laughs> it's perfect mm-hmm. perfect for the viewers you know you can sense it you can you can really feel it you know and during yeah. during covid and stuff like that's what sport's been missing i mean yeah it's still good watching it but like that whether whether you know the classic games and the real um the real passionate memorable stuff happens is when the crowd are there and they're just spurring the players on screaming at the players you know they're 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 playing the game essentially they're part of the performance man. yeah it's, for sure it's amazing Okay, um, so Man you obviously we just finished the international break with football, so we had a bit of a gap. Um, yeah. And then we played West Brom, uh, and we won, barely. Man U, this is Man U, by the way. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so we, we beat West Brom 1-0, <laughs> but I watched the highlights today, actually, and uh, it was the least convincing win you'll ever see <laughs> like man united should destroy not destroy but should like convincingly win against west brom and basically i'll just give a sort of cliff notes of it we uh our forward uh or oh, midfielder fernandez tackles someone very dodgily in the box almost gives away a penalty they they give the penalty on the on the play and then they go back and the var changes it VAR, so it's no again. longer a penalty so we luck out massively because it is questionable tackle. Right. I mean, what he's doing there, I don't know. Anyway, our defense, mate, is a joke. And then, <laughs> um, and then we get a penalty which was a handball later on in the game, and it's like, I don't know. His hand was kind of above his waist, but he's clearly turning away, nowhere near. And it's like a, such a, it's like a graze. I don't know. Yeah. It probably was a handball, but it's like such an, it's such an unlucky and unfortunate penalty. As a Man U fan, like, yeah. I'm looking at it, I'm like, oh dear. Okay. I hate that stuff. And it's, not, then, it's not fun. It's not part of the, it's not no. part of the game. Like, no. yeah, yeah, fair enough. It might have grazed his arm, but I, I don't believe that should stop the game. That shouldn't be a handball. Like, I that's, agree. That's crazy. He's, he's, he's li- you could li- see in the slow mo, he's doing everything humanly possible to get his him his ar- arms out of the way. He's just basically the ball was just um, pelted, and he just couldn't physically move out the way quick enough. Basically, and it, he's, yeah. his hand was above his waist. To be fair, so I think by the book it was handball. But anyway, so Fernandez, this guy, he's he's all over the place. He's almost caused the penalty. Then he takes this penalty basically. Um, goes in he does his classic I've told you about how much I hate him taking penalties he does his little tiptoe and then he yeah, jumps yeah. and does his little scoop of a penalty shot uh, and the he, he keeper saves it because it there's no power in these shots that he does that it doesn't look like anyway sack him. there's no run up to it yeah sack him immediately <laughs> but, but listen to this VAR then re, let him retake a penalty because the keeper was off his line because he does this little weird gym, like jiggle and then jump the keeper like jumped early and was off the line basically before the oh, ball was for hit. For God's sake! So they let him take it again, and then he scores it. And it's like it's like the most, it's the most unworthy win I've ever seen in my life. And I'm rooting for the team that are winning. So just to show the how bad it was, <laughs> like, oh, man. Um, I felt very bad for West Brom. To be fair, they deserved like at least maybe even a win or a draw. Like we didn't deserve to win that. It was it was pretty bad play. Um, is and yeah VAR has just had a massive impact in that game huge yeah um we should we before VAR we would be down 1-0 yeah Pro- almost certainly like they didn't take the penalty in the end but I'm sure they probably would have scored you know um the more I so, the more I watch football with VAR the more I dislike it I always used yeah, to be I in the camp of like VAR's perfect why wouldn't you use it oh it's amazing mm-hmm. like you know cricket rugby always helps blah 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 now I'm like get rid of it get rid it was it was fine before no problem yeah you know that's it's stupid not a fan yeah yeah no i think um i i think i agree i that's this and just put in context as well that so far in the season that's the second penalty that he's taken that a keeper has saved and then it's been retaken because the keeper was off the line yeah crazy because of var so like um, those are that's two penalties that we've we've scored in the end, but we should have missed in theory, like back in the old days that we would have missed. Yeah. Um. So anyway, yeah, that's Man U. What what about City? Are they how are they doing? Well, yeah, same sort of thing. We had the we had the break um, when we last until recently the last game was that draw with Liverpool. Um, mm. 
which was going to define the top of the table fight. <laughs> but um, neither of us are going to win now. But um, yeah, we played.